Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Wyatt, and I'm coming at you with the, with the updated build video. Now, this is only updated really because I changed a couple of the build, like just one ability, but mainly because the audio quality in my last build video of this was pretty bad. I don't know what happened when I uploaded it to YouTube, but for some reason the music that I put on got really loud, and then the, the audio of me actually talking got really quiet. <laughs> But that wasn't the case when I uploaded it. When I listened to it before uploading it, it was perfect. You could barely hear the music. And my voice was fine. But then when I realized a couple of days later after I looked at the build video and actually watched some of it, I was like, man, I can't even understand myself. But uh, let's jump straight into the stats. So for our stats, uh, our health is at 13.5k. Uh, no, our health is not at 13.5k. Our health, our magic is at 13.5k. Our health is at 31,000. And our stamina is at 23,000. Now, this is because our attributes are at 34,000. Thir 34 health and 30 stamina. Sorry, I just recorded this whole thing like three seconds ago. And I, then I came out of the recording to finish recording. And I had realized that the recording program had crashed. So. Yeah, that was fun, but uh, magic recovery is at 514, health recovery is at 154, and hold on, I gotta buff up because that actually goes up. So our stamina recovery goes up to 2,770, our weapon damage on our front bar is 5,400 almost. Weapon crit is... 11% penetration is 700, but that goes up to about 10,000 once we hit Pierce Armor. Our resistances were at 16k on the front bar. 16k, 17k almost on the front bar with 200, 2,200 crit resist. And on our back bar, it goes up to about 19,000. So we're not exactly tankies, but we're no slouch either. Now for the sets. We are still running pretty much the same sets as our main sets. We're running Bloodspawn, Danger of Trickery, and Deadlands Assassin. Now, Bloodspawn has a monster set, Bolt are impenetrable. All the big pieces on this build have health enchants, so chest, helmet, and legs. And all the small pieces have stamina enchants. So just keep, bear that in mind, we are running 7 medium. So medium, medium, all impenetrable traits. So now we got medium, 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 medium. All right, now on to the jewelry. We are running Deadlands Assassin here for the jewelry, and we are running one. We are running three infused, but one has a weapon damage enchant, and two of them have stamina enchant, recovery enchants. Now for our first weapon, we are running a Nurnhund Greatsword with a disease damage enchant, and then for our back bar, we are running a powered one-hander and a shield this doesn't have to be a mace it can be any one hander but just try to make sure it's powered you could also run defending here but i like powered more to get extra heals um deadlands assassin shield and we have reinforced here for the trait for the extra armor or you could have sturdy too but also one note that i want to make is that uh, I, don't, I took them off, but uh, I said in my last build that I swapped between Plague Break or Deadlands Assassin, depending on how, who I'm versing. Don't swap between Plague Break anymore. That thing is going to be absolutely horrible next patch. I mean, you can still use it right now. It hasn't been changed, but next patch it's going to be the horrible. Horrible. So don't bother even picking it up if you haven't already. Now, for the race that I use, I use the Orc Race. I think the Orc Race is the best race in terms of what I like to do for PvP. It gives us movement speed, it gives us a passive heal, um, gives us health, gives us stamina, gives us weapon damage, but that's what I like out of my characters, but you could run Imperial, you could run Nord. I think Orc, Imperial, and Nord are the three best races for this, but you could run any other race. I think probably Khajiit is probably the worst one for this build just because their thing relies on a lot of crit. <laughs> and we have almost no crit, as you can see. <laughs> but now let's go back and jump into this page. So the Mundus that I'm using is the Serpent. You could swap this over to the Lover if you want to. I think the Serpent and the Lover are going to be your two best Mundus stones for this build. I don't think any of the other ones come to 
touch quite as much as these two do for it. And so we are running a Ubius Camoran Throne, it's the purple food. Now this gives us every stat we need. We need more stamina recovery, we need more stamina, and we need more health. I don't like Lava Foot Soup for this build because without the extra health coming from our food buff, then we're, we're honestly pretty squishy for this build. And that's not what I like, so it'll make our, like, as you, like, our, but this might seem a little iffy, like, having this much stamina, but we have tons of recovery, and it's not a big deal. Once you get used to having a stamina pool like that, then, I mean, it's fine. But if you need to adjust things, I would say to maybe take off one health glyph and put a stamina glyph on it, but I wouldn't say go too much past that. Now for the potions. I mainly use the trash stand potions just so I can get extra stamina back, but if I'm fighting against a, like a pretty big group, or if I'm having a lot of issues against somebody, I'll use either Essence of Lingering Health or Essence of Immovability. Essence of Immovability with Health and Stamina. And they, obviously they're a movable trait. But I don't use these as much anymore. This kind of depends on if I'm running Shuffle or not. So mainly I'll end up using Lingering Health just to get the major vitality in case Daedric Trickery hasn't proc'd that. And also to get the nice little heal over time that it has. But... Those are the two potions, I, the three potions I prefer to use. I've been swaying away from Essence of Movability quite a bit since I slotted Shuffle though on this build. Now let's cover the active abilities and why I'm harping so much over Shuffle right now. But uh, so we're running Executioner, Dizzying Swing, Blighted Blast Bones, Shuffle, Rally, and Pestilent Colossus. Now Shuffle and Pestilent Colossus are, you can, are, there are flex spots, so for shuffle, there's two other abilities you could slot. You could slot detonating siphing right here, but this kind of requires a big change in how you play, because you have to kind of keep that beam. Either you have to fight next to the to the corpse, or you have to keep them in between you and the corpse, so you get the beam that damages them. But this probably gives you the best damage potential out of all the others. Plus that thing is is that you also have to learn how to manage to keep two drains going on two corpses all the time which i think that just dug into my ability to do damage to people overall but if you if you can get used to that more power to you <laughs> and then the other ability that you can slot there is stampede stampede is it's a good ability it gives you a gap closer it's nice but i think uh, overall i think shuffle is the better option here and then for our ultimate, the other ultimate that we can use is the Dawnbreaker of Smiting. Make sure it is Dawnbreaker of Smiting because the stun is great. But uh, I'm kind of lazy to grind out that. Plus, uh, honestly, whenever I'm, I can, if you can funnel people into a spot to use a Colossus, it's just such a great ult. So I've just been managing to do that and being lazy on grinding it out. But D Dawnbreaker of Smiting is going to be your better ult to use here. <laughs> Unless you're playing with the group. Now for our back bar, there we're running Pierce Armor, uh, Mortal Coil, Resolving Vigor, Spirit Guardian, Summoner's Armor, and Ravenous Goliath. Now you could also slot the Sword and Board ult here, but it just doesn't stand anything against the the, the clown form. <laughs> This is this this ultimate's great. It's it's something else. You can just pretty much forget about all sorts of defense. I mean, you shouldn't, because eventually they'll end up taking you down if you don't proc your heals. But I mean, you just become so stupidly tanky with this. So make sure you. I prefer to use this one the most, and then use Pierce Armor if you need to crack a tough opponent. Now, let's go on to the passives. So for the passives. All the Grave Lord, all Bone Tyrant, all Living Death, all Two Hander, all One Hand and Shield, all Medium Armor. Uh, you can pick up whatever you want from these. Fighters Guild, you want to have Slayer, Banish the Wicked, Skilled Tracker. You want to have Undaunted Command and Undaunted Metal, of course, if you want to get those. They don't give you... Honestly, they're kind of pointless because we're only using one type of armor type. So, I mean, it's just a, practically nothing. So, I mean, do it, you do it at your own risk. Big one here is Continuous Attack and Combat Frenzy. Those are good ones to get. 
um, support, get those if you want them. Racial, get all of racials. And then in alchemy, if you ha want to get alchemy leveled up, you can you grab the passives that give you more uh, buff time on your potions. That'll make it so you don't have to pock as much, waste as much money in the long run. And also it gives you more uptime on your potion effects. Now, let's jump into the champion points a bit. So, like I always say, with the green tree, I don't want to tell you what to do with this. I don't care what you do with this. This doesn't really affect how you fight. This is more about what you're trying to do at the time and just gives you some quality of life things. I prefer to always have Steed's Blessing or Gifted Rider and whatnot. But for our blue tree, so what you want to do is you want to start here at Tireless Discipline. Go out to extend my pickup piercing, go back up, go to master at arms, go back down, pick up staving death. Okay, go in here, get quick recovery, and then max out ironclad slot that. Then go into duelist rebuff, get that, and then pick up unassailable and pick and get that. And then after that, just pick up all the like passive stars that you want, do whatever you want after that. Then on our red tree, we're gonna start right here at Tumbling. Go over to Defiance, pick up Juggernaut, and then come back down, pick up Expert Evasion. Those two are, are pretty big ones for our survivability, and it's nice for sustain. Then come over here, pick up Sprinter, and go up to here, pick up uh, Hasty, and then pick up Celerity, and go over here, pick up Hero's Vigor, and then pick up Boundless Vitality. And then after that, kind of just pick up all the passives that you want for this tree. At that point, it doesn't really matter all that much, but that's it for my champion points. Now, here's a little bit of how I play this this build. Make sure you always keep up your buffs. Like, if you have to, I mean, honestly, you shuffle, you don't need to keep active all the time. The only time I actually keep shuffle up active is when I notice that I'm getting hit with a lot of AoE abilities. If I'm versing like a Templar or something. But then after that, the only time I actually activate Shuffle is when I need the CC immunity, not the, the Snare immunity. Because uh, if I get cut, if I get locked down, having that to just purge that really fast is a great thing. So, Shuffle, great. Plus it's not a purge and play break right now is kind of annoying, so need that. But um, make sure you keep up Rally. Spirit Met Guardian is honestly your biggest thing to keep up. This thing gives you so much tank, it's... Uh, <laughs> uh, hold on, let me scroll off of that, but yeah. Um, it's so ridiculous how much tank you get from it. And yeah, I lost my train of thought a little bit, but uh, yeah, the tankiness from that, make sure you keep those up. Always keep that, uh, that restoring tether up whenever you can. The passive healing that you get from that, but then after that, the, your combo is going to be start off with uh, blast bones, move in, medium attack, dizzy, sw dizzy swing, dizzy swing, medium attack, knock him down, and then depending on that, hit him with another dizzy swing, and then um, maybe ca at this point it kind of just depends what their health is at. If they're kind of like at like maybe like 40%, then cast the blast bones and start hitting execute. Because then by the time Blast Bones is ready, they'll, it'll probably be there to execute them. And then, at that point, just don't let your buffs run out. Don't get so focused on the kill that you let your buffs run out and then get bursted down really fast. <clears throat> also, the th big thing about using Colossus is you want to either use it after you stun them. So, like, say I knock them down with that attack. That would be the time to use Colossus if I'm trying to use it on one person. But if I'm getting chased by three people people and I can line aside them maybe run through this run around this corner drop Colossus right here when they're starting to run run back and then fight them like right on the edge of this to pull them back into Colossus because you'll get like maybe one or two smashes on with Colossus using it like that and that's pretty much how I play honestly PvP is just a lot about rolling with the flow like maybe you're getting hit too hard you can't really fight back at the time just got to try and stay alive find another time to be able to fight back and also with my build you kind of just have to adjust it to what you need maybe this is overkill for sustain for you I like having this much sustain it is overkill honestly I almost never run out of resources with this build 
So honestly, it, it is overkill. <laughs> but uh, you could change some of these to weapon damage enchants. Maybe this build doesn't have enough sustain for you. Change this to a uh, stamina enchant or a stamina recovery enchant. I don't know. Do something. I I, I like it when people try and ch take away things from other people's builds and try to adjust them for their own needs. So you know, yeah, do that. Also, again, gonna cover my style overview. Like I did in the last one, not so much as change, the only thing that changed was my sword, but since nobody can hear it, so. Running Greymore Helm, Dramora Kynry's Pauldrons, Fire Drake Greaves, Fire Drake Curious, Dramora Kynry Girdle, Deadlands Gladiator Sabatons. And then Tribune Steel, Smith Steel, Warrior Steel, Tribune, Smith, 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 Warrior, Tribunes, Smith, Tribunes, Smith Steel, Tribunes, Tribunes. And that's it for my style. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope the audio comes out better on this one. This is my third time pretty much recording a video on this build. So, please leave a like. Maybe subscribe if you like to. <laughs> but, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave, leave a like and comment down below. I like talking, seeing you guys comment. I like talking to you guys down below. And maybe ask me what kind of... Ask me to do another build video. I'm actually working on coming out with the build video for my Stamina Templar. I just need to record that and I need to, I'm still doing some testing on it too, but I need to record that and I need to get that pushed out, but I, I had to redo this one. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video and hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.